Hello and welcome back to my channel where I try and create home decor stuff on a budget. After a long break, I am back with my new DIY of this tufted looking headboard which my husband and I made for our king size bed. Now tufting in real life is kinda difficult and I believe that it requires some sort of skill and a whole lot of time and patience but we achieved this look by using some good old regular roofing nails and some washers. So if you're interested in knowing how we made this, then please keep on watching. So we are starting off by cutting the plywood in the shape that we want. You can of course pick any shape that works best for you, but we went for the single wave-like design. Also, we didn't make the whole design in one go since we did not have a big enough sheet to make this entire design. So we first made one of the sides, had it cut and then just traced the cut part on the other side so that both sides look identical. Here we are sanding off the rough edges to remove any splinters. Next I am leaving a lip of 3 by 8 inches on the two vertical sides as these will help us in the end in joining the sideboards or wings to it. Also you can find all the measurements etc in the description box below so make sure that you check that out. Next, I am using this foam mattress topper in 1 1 4th inch to create that padding effect. Now you can of course get proper sponge to do this part, but sponges are kinda expensive in US, so we decided to be a bit creative and use two of these mattress toppers for our project. Here I am stretching and spreading the mattress topper on the board. Now if you want, you can glue the sponge to the board, but I didn't do that. Instead, to keep the sponge in place, I am using a regular tape and sticking it to the board. This will keep the sponge in place for some time while I carry on with my other steps. Next, we marked some measurements on the board and to make it more comprehensible, I am going to use the schematic. So imagine this to be my headboard and I am starting by marking a length of 6 inches from the bottom. This will be our baseline or line 0. So this is the part which will go behind the mattress so we do not have to worry about tufting or putting sponge in this area. Next, I am making lines at 6 inches from this initial baseline. Now, let's call these lines A, B, C, D, etc. Next, I am going to mark the points where the nails will go for which I am going to leave the baseline as it is and I am going to start marking the points on the lines just above it. Now on this first line which is line A, I am going to mark each point at a distance of 9.5 inches from the edge and from each other. To get the diamond look, I am leaving a gap of 4.5 inches from the corner of line B, marking that point and from there I am going to mark points at a distance of 9.5 inches. Once that row is finished, I am moving on the line above it which is line C and will again mark points at 9.5 inches exactly as how we did for line A. Again on line D, leave a gap of 4.5 inches from the corner, mark that point and measure and mark 9.5 inches from it. Now continue marking these points in this manner till you don't have any more lines left. 
For the topmost line, which is not long enough, mark the points in correspondence with the bottom points or if you want, you can just eyeball it. And now if you look closely, you will get those diamond shapes in between. Now once I have marked all the points, I am cutting holes in all these points and when I say holes, they are like 1 to 2 inches big. Initially, I was scared of destroying the foam so I made some really small holes but don't be like me. Make a somewhat big enough hole because these holes will help us in hammering the nails on the board and will make the future steps more easy. After that, we are spreading this batting roll on the mattress topper and we are stapling it to the board. Now on the sides, we are stapling it at the 3 8 inch lip that we had left initially and on the top and bottom, we are stapling the batting in the back. Cut off the extra batting and the mattress topper so that your board looks something like this. Again, make holes through the batting too on the points where you had made the holes before and here too, make the holes 1 to 2 inches wide. Next, we are placing our fabric which is this dark green velvet cloth all across the board. Now to get that tufted look, we are using this roofing nail and after passing it through a washer, locate the hole that you have made before, place it firmly and start hammering the nail. And I would like to highlight here that hammering nails through fabric and sponge is not so easy. So please be careful when you do this part because while you are hammering, the nail will have a tendency of bouncing back and you may hammer your fingers by mistake, which we absolutely do not want. So the key is to be patient, take time with it and once you get a hang of how to go about it, then increase your pace. So here we are doing alternate rows of hammering but now since we have finished this project, I feel that you do not have to go alternately. You can just go row wise and you can get a much better effect. Once we finished with the longer rows, we are working on the shorter rows that is the ones where we had left the 4.5 inches gap. Again, locate the holes and hammer the nail and the washer in it. Arrange the fabric in the tufted pattern that you want and continue hammering the nails. Now you might be thinking, why not hammer just the nail, why are we even using a washer for doing a step? Well, washer will actually help us in creating that cleaner looking tufting effect and create a more deeper hole than what we would get by just using a nail. For finishing the corners, we had to keep the board upright and see how each fold was falling and arranging it according to the pattern that we wanted. Again, as I said, take time with this, don't be in a hurry and you will achieve the pattern that you're looking for. Now to cover up the nails, I got this button making kit from Amazon. It comes with a stencil, a mold kind of thing which will actually help in making those fabric buttons and it has directions on how to use them. But these would have worked perfectly for me if my fabric had been a bit thinner. But velvet fabric that I used was too thick to make buttons using these kit. So I had to improvise and decided to do my own thing. So what I did was I marked a circle using the stencil that was in the kit, cut the shape out and then hand stitched a pouch kind of thing for the buttons.
Once I have made this pouch, I am placing the button in the pouch and I'm going to stitch around it tightly so that it all looks put together. Don't worry about the back part of these buttons as when we finally use these buttons, only the top part will be visible. Once I have finished the stitching, I use some super glue to keep the stitch in place. And this is how the final buttons look like. Now repeat these steps of button making for another 25 to 30 times till you have enough number of buttons for covering all your nail heads. Now please ignore the lighting here as I was shooting in daylight and clouds were in a kind of funny mood that day so yeah it all looks kind of weird colored here. To stick these buttons on the board, I am using some hot glue. You can use any kind of a strong adhesive, but whatever glue you use, make sure that you do not spill any of it on the fabric because removing glue from fabric will not be easy. And this is how a headboard looks in the end. I will agree that it is a somewhat time consuming process but I feel that it requires less time than the actual dufting process. I couldn't fit the video for the sideboard or the wing making process in this particular video as this one itself was coming out to be too long so I will show you how I made the sideboard in another video. But for now let me know what you think of this DIY tufted looking headboard. If you like my efforts then you know the drill, hit the like button. Share your views and feedback in the comment section below, share it with your friends and family in case they are looking for some DIY ideas and of course subscribe to my channel to get more fun DIY projects and while you are at it, make sure that you click that little bell right next to it so that you know when I upload all my future videos. Thank you so much for stopping by, please take care and stay safe.